Hey y'all, I'm Micah. Grab your Bibles. Let's go through the Word. So we're picking up here in Mark chapter 3, uh, starting in verse 7. And we just had uh, Jesus make everybody mad at him. <laughs> he is really good at that. But he does it in just the right ways. Uh, he did it by challenging the religious leaders, challenging the way that they made assumptions and thoughts, and they didn't really like that very much. So picking up here in verse 7, we see Jesus withdrew with his disciples uh, to the lake, and a large crowd from Galilee followed. When they heard all about all he was doing, many people came to him from Judea, Jerusalem, Edomia, and the regions across the Jordan and around Tyre and Sidon. Because of the crowd, he told his disciples to have a small boat ready for him, to keep the people from crowding him. For he had healed many, so that those with diseases were pushing forward to touch him. Whenever the impure spirits saw him, they fell down before him and cried out, You are the Son of God. But he gave them strict orders not to tell others about him. We learn a lot just sometimes by watching Jesus, not even necessarily by what he says, but uh, by the impact uh, his presence has on those around him. So he's left now because the, the local leaders didn't like him. Um, he uh, took off, uh, tried to make some space. But what's so incredible is the fact that even though he has left because those in power didn't like him, that didn't change the response the people were having to him because of who he was and what he was doing. The, the lives that he was impacting, as a matter of fact, it went from being this thing in this northern region, region of Galilee uh, to him uh, having people follow him from from uh, major kingdoms in the area, from, from Judea to the south, from its capital, Jerusalem, from the region of uh, Edomia, and from regions across the Jordan, different nationalities, including those uh, also from the north and Tyre and Sidon. People were coming from everywhere to see Jesus. Why? Because he was making a difference unlike anyone had ever seen before. He was impacting lives. And what's so incredible about this is he's impacting lives when he's trying to get away. He's trying to make space. He's trying to, I don't want to, I don't necessarily know if it was a vacation per se, but he was trying to find some space. And even in that, the ministry never stopped because what was most important to him was the people that he was serving, the people that he was loving, the people that he was taking care of. And so wherever he went, he was surrounded even if he was trying to get away, he was surrounded. Why? Because he loved and he loved well and he took care of people and he did exactly what they needed, even if they didn't know what it was that they needed. So I guess that's what we're left with. Do we love the way Jesus loved? Do we care for people the way Jesus cared for people? Are people so impacted by Jesus in our lives and us reflecting Jesus in our lives that they're changed and they're flocking to him? It's something we all need to wrestle with and realize that we have a calling that's bigger than ourselves. Let me say a word, a word of prayer for us. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you again for this opportunity to come back to your word to open up the pages and to just seek after you. God, will you challenge us? Will you challenge us to love like Jesus loves? Will you challenge us to be Jesus in the communities where we are? Would you make us shining reflections of your glory so that as people see the work that we're pursuing in season and out, that they see you and that it helps bring more and more people to you. Thank you, Father, for your provision. Thank you, Jesus, for your work. It's in that name we pray, amen. Thanks, guys.